A brief introduction to modeling in GAMS. In this video we will review a simple transport model. We will also have a look at the GAMS output that is obtained after solving an instance of a model. Let's first retrieve the transport model from the GAMS model library. Click on menu model libraries and select item GAMS model library. Organize the models by sequence number and double click on model transport. Before looking at the model, let's consider the problem. There are two canning plants, one in Seattle and one in San Diego, that supply a single commodity. The number below the city denote the supply capacity of the commodity, in other words the number of can cases. Can cases needs to be shipped from the plants to the markets in Topeka, Chicago and New York. The number below the city denotes the demand in number of cases. The freight cost is $90 per case per thousand miles and therefore the total transportation cost is proportional to the distance of shipped commodities. The question is how many cases should be shipped from the plants to the markets in order to minimize the transport cost. From this figure we can see that the distance between Seattle and Topeka is longer than the distance between San Diego and Topeka and therefore we should ship from San Diego to Topeka if we have enough supply capacity in San Diego. In this figure we can see the mathematical representation of the problem. We can for example see the objective function which is to minimize the total transportation cost. I will now say some words about GAMS, the General Algebraic Modeling System. The GAMS modeling language is declarative and procedural. It makes full use of the elegance of the mathematical representation and also includes program control features like loops and if statements. A GAMS model is a collection of statements in the GAMS programming language. The language aims to be concise and the GAMS model may also serve as a program documentation. The model data and logic is separated, which means, for our example, that having more cities does not affect the model logic. Let's now take a look at the transport model. On the first lines we can see the model title and a short description. The dollar sign as first character has a special meaning but we will not explain it in this video. It is good modeling practice to start off with identifying and grouping the entities of sets, parameters and variables. Note that the GAMS keywords like sets, parameters and variables are denoted with a bolded dark blue font. Declaring an entity like a set means to state its existence by giving it a name. Giving the entity a specific value is called defining the entity. An assignment of an entity allows us to define an entity in an elaborate way, for example as a result of a calculation. We recommend to define the values instead of assigning them, if this is convenient to do. First we declare the indices i and j that denote domain sets. The indices or domain sets denote the different plants and markets in our problem. The domain set i has the description canning plants and the defined set elements Seattle and San Diego. The set elements are defined between slashes and separated with a comma. Note that if the identifier includes spaces it needs to be surrounded by quotes or you can replace the spaces with hyphens. A GAM statement is ended by a semicolon character. Furthermore, GAMS does not distinguish between upper and lower case characters. Comments can be added by using asterisks as first character of a line. Comments and descriptive names for entities can make the model easier to maintain as well as work as a documentation for the model. Parameters and variables can be defined over a domain set. Data is given in parameters and parameter A denotes the supply capacity for the elements in the domain set I. Note that zero is the default value for all parameters and therefore only non-zero entries need to be specified. 
we recommend to include the unit of an entity in a parameter description if the unit is known, which in our parameter is the number of cases. Parameter B denotes the market demand. Keyword table defines a parameter that expects the definition in table format. Keyword scalar defines a zero-dimensional parameter and in this case we define the value to be 90. We declare parameter C that describes the transport cost between the plants and markets. We assign parameter C a value that is calculated from the freight cost and the shipment distance as well as scale to denote thousands of dollars. Keyword variable declares the decision variable x and z. x denotes the shipment volume from plants to markets that we want to figure out. z denotes the total transport cost that we want to minimize. Keywords positive variable denotes that x has a lower bound of zero and no numerical upper bound. In practice this means that the shipment must be from a plant to a market and not the other way around. Keywords equations declares three equation blocks. The objective equation block cost and constraint blocks supply and demand. Note that equation supply is declared over the domain of plants I and that the demand is declared over the domain of markets J. Let's now look at the definition of equation cost, which minimizes the cost of all transports. We start by denoting the equation name and possibly adding domain control. The dot dot symbol separates the equation name from the left hand side expression. Then we denote the relational operator and the right hand side expression. The relational operator can, for example, be less than or equal to, equal to, or greater than and equal to. One should not confuse the relational operator equal to with the assignment operator. Let's get back to the equation cost. The left hand side expression is the free variable set, which means that the variable has no numerical lower or upper bound. The free objective variable z combined with the equal to relationship operator and the objective function states that the objective variable z takes the value of the objective function. Here we use the keyword sum instead of the mathematical summation symbol. This is because there is no self-evident key on a standard keyboard for the summation symbol. The sum takes all the set element combinations for i and j and replaces them in parameter c and decision variable x. The next two equations are constraints. The supply equation states as follow. For each plant in I, it holds that the sum of all outgoing shipments from the specific I to all markets J is less than or equal to the supply capacity of that specific I. Similarly, the demand equation states. For each market J, it holds that the sum of shipments from all plants I to the specific j is greater than or equal to the demand of that specific j. Keyword model declares a model with the equations specified between slashes. However, in this case we use a shorthand all to include all three equations. The solve statement says that we want to solve the model transport by using linear programming where we want to minimize variable level z. Keyword display lets us specify specific output to be printed to the listing file that we will soon have a look at. Note that variables have attribute fields like levels, lower and upper bounds and therefore we need to specify which attribute field we want to display. In this case we want to display the attribute field level denoted by dot L and marginal denoted by dot M. Now, Click on run and execute the model. The process window shows the progress of a GAMS job. The process window output is saved to a file which is called the GAMS log file. The progress during the compilation, solver execution and solution phases can be seen. Next we look at the GAMS listing file. 
the left pane is the index of the listing file and the right pane the listing file itself. Let's take a quick look from top to bottom. First a copy of the GAMS model with line numbers added is given. Note that the dollar control directives has omitted the first line numbers to be printed. Next we see equation cost in explicit form. All the terms that depend on variables are collected on the left hand side and all the constant terms are combined in the one number on the right hand side of the equation. Note that any necessary sign changes are made. We can see that decision variable z must be equal to the transport cost of shipments from plants to markets. The weight in front of the decision variables x denote the transport cost of one case between the specific cities. Furthermore, the left hand side expression value is given before the solver execution has taken place. The default variable level is 0 and therefore the left hand side is 0. Furthermore, a infeasible initial point is marked by infes. Column listing shows in which specific equations a variable occurs. Model statistics shows that the model has three equation blocks, cost, supply and demand, and that they consist of six single equations. The solve summary states that the solver completed normally and that an optimal solution with value $153,000 is found. Furthermore, for equations and variables, the levels, bounds and marginals are given at the found solution. The output of the display statement can also be found. We can see the shipment volumes between the cities. For example, it tells us to ship zero cases from Seattle to Topeka. Next we can see the marginals for which a precise explanation would require its own chapter. However, a rough and unprecise explanation could be, if we insist on shipping one case from Seattle to Topeka instead of San Diego to Topeka, then it will cost us $36 more. In the figure, the model instance solution can be seen in visual form. The contents of this video is inspired by chapter 2 in the GAMS user's guide that is written by Ricard Rosenthal. If you are a beginner to GAMS and want to become familiar with the GAMS modeling language, then one way is to organize the GAMS model library models by sequence and start reviewing the models from the top. You may also search for models by searching with a keyword and jump to the next match with the down arrow key. Model Demo 1 describes a simple farm model where we maximize the profit.